Welcome to Fish Geekery. I'm Patty Mesha, and in this week's Species Focus, we'll be learning about the brook trout. The brook trout is in the same biological order as salmon, and in fact their family name is Salmonidae, which you'd think would be the name they gave to the salmon branch of the family, but taxonomy is enough of a beast to possibly have its own video someday. Despite their names, the brook trout and its cousins, the bull trout, the lake trout, and the dolly varden, aren't technically trout at all, but char. That means they're more closely related to the arctic char than they are to rainbow trout. Char have smaller scales than trout, have light colored spots on a generally dark body, and lack teeth on the roofs of their mouths. Yes, that means that true trout have teeth on the roofs of their mouths. There are also differences in skeletal structure, but by the time you can see the fish's skeleton, I don't think it really matters anymore who it was related to. The brook trout is also known as the brookie, or square tail. Some people also call it a speckled trout, though there is some debate among biologists about whether speckled trout is just a name for any brook trout, or if it's a specific breed, a subspecies, or even a species all by itself. Because brook trout prefer cool, clear water with plenty of oxygen, they're usually found in streams, rivers, or spring-fed ponds. They're carnivores, eating mainly insects like mayflies and blackflies, and sometimes some other small invertebrates. Larger ones will also sometimes eat small fish, including minnows or even their own young. Brook trout are native to eastern North America, from Newfoundland and Labrador to the western side of the Hudson Bay, south to the Great Lakes and the Gulf of Maine, down through most of the northeastern United States, and in the Appalachian Mountains as far south as northern Georgia. They've also been introduced to much of North America and temperate regions on other continents. Many coastal river systems in their native territory are home to a variety of brook trout known as salters that swim out to sea when stream temperatures rise in the spring. They can stay up there for up to three months, but they don't usually wander very far from the mouth of the river they came down. Brook trout eggs hatch in the spring, and the young that emerge are known as sac fry or alevins. An alevin will live off the nutrients in its yolk for the first two to three weeks of its life, while the rest of its body continues to develop. Only when the yolk is almost completely absorbed will they start to feed for themselves, and then they're known simply as fry. Several weeks after beginning to feed, the young fish will develop dark vertical bands on their sides, known as par markings or par banding, to help them hide in the shallows of the streams. At this point, they're known as par. As the fish continues to age, the par banding will fade and be replaced by the characteristic blue haloed red spots. Their lower fins will develop a bright white leading edge, set off by a black line, while the rest of the fin turns a rusty red. Along their sides and backs, they'll also start to get that classic patterning, technically called vermiculations, but any term like dorsal markings or even brook trout patterning is perfectly acceptable. There are a couple subspecies of brook trout. The aurora trout is native to only two lakes, Whirligig Lake and White Pine Lake, in northeastern Ontario. They disappeared in the 1960s, but were reintroduced from hatchery stocks in the 1990s to the original two lakes as well as ten other lakes. Unfortunately, they were only able to naturally reproduce in one of the original lakes and one of the introduced lakes. So again, they're only found in two places. Another is the silver trout though there are some sources that consider it a separate species from the brook trout. It was last seen in 1930 and is presumed extinct. It was only ever found in three places, Dublin Pond, Lake Sunapee, and Christine Lake, all in New Hampshire. The three lakes were once connected, but as the glacier retreated and the landscape changed, they were isolated from one another. It's a sadly common story in North American fisheries history. An isolated species was quickly overwhelmed by non-native fish brought in for sport fishing. Many fish species have had trouble over the last couple of centuries due to invasive species or pollution or changes to their habitat, and the brook trout is certainly no exception. But they have been able to hold on pretty well because of their ability to reproduce so early in life. Most reach maturity at the age of two, with some ready to spawn at only one year. This has allowed damaged populations to rebuild themselves much more quickly than other species that have to wait four or even five years for the new generation to be established. While they still have a long way to go in some places, as a species, they're doing pretty well. And as regulations improve and conservation awareness continues to grow, more of our streams will be cleaned up and returned to their natural state. 
creating more habitat for this clean water species. I know I'm looking forward to that. If you have any questions or comments, or have any suggestions for topics we can cover in the future, we can be reached on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, in the comments below. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.